Hello everyone, I'm Cole from the Kingdom, and today I want to talk about one of the oldest yet quietest mysteries in Mass Effect, Pharos and the Thorian. Pharos was a Prothean metropolis. Yes, Prothean. And the ruins of the planet are remarkably and curiously intact. The Thorian knew the Protheans and had enslaved their minds while they were there. That's why it was able to give Shiala the cipher. But it's also suggested it predated the Protheans. But why was it there? First of all, why was it high up in the Prothean skyscraper? But more importantly, why didn't the Reapers destroy it? Why didn't the Protheans destroy it? Let's start by examining the lore we have on what the Thorian actually is. Then we'll talk about what it was doing in the skyscraper, why the Protheans didn't destroy it, and then about the Reapers on Pharos. So the Thorian was a plant-like being. Its neural network spanned for miles, with the center of it being housed in the skyscraper. It was capable of absorbing other species and using that as a template to create clones. Additionally, through the use of spores that victims would inhale, it was able to exert a form of mind control on them. It works very differently to Reaper indoctrination. Indoctrination either subtly influences the mind and thought processes of its victims, or exerts outright control and forces thoughts in. The Thorian's mind control works by sending out commands and inducing pain in response to rebellious thoughts. It uses its victims for self-maintenance, but otherwise lets them live normal lives, with the exception they not go too far and don't say or do anything that would compromise the Thorian. Pharos had been picked over and looted for centuries before humans tried to colonize it, so it stands to reason that Exogeny and Zeus Hope were not the first to encounter it. They were just the first that lived to tell. I imagine anyone else was either enslaved or killed by those enslaved. It's possible no one ever found it before, since the Thorian apparently hibernated for thousands of years at a time, and it generally did not want to call attention to itself. Exogeny was a corporation bent on colonizing the world, whereas the previous visitors were probably just scavengers and salvagers, maybe a few hundred at a time at most, and they weren't planning on sticking around anyway. Plus, one random skyscraper on a planet full of them? Odds are pretty low that they would stumble on it without a thorough and dedicated search effort, beyond what most salvagers would do. Could have been a chance for a horror story, though. Some of the salvagers go missing, some more go looking for them, they too go missing, and eventually they either call it quits, or the team they send sends a message like, Don't send anybody after us. Though the Thorian didn't want to call attention to itself, it enslaved Zeus Hope because, one, they were right on top of it, and so it didn't really have much of a choice. And two, it was a bunch of easy potential workers for it. So that's why it risked exposing itself. So, the Protheans built the cities on Pharos. The majority of the planet is urban. But how did the Thorian get so high up in the skyscraper? And once the Protheans discovered this entity that could control mines, why did they not destroy it? Well, we don't know when the Thorian was discovered in relation to when they started colonizing Pharos. The Thorian speaks as if it's older than the Protheans. Perhaps the Inu Sanan also knew of it, and that's what drove the Protheans there in the first place. Perhaps they built the Metropoli on Pharos to obscure what they were doing with the Thorian. Or, they were building the Metropoli just because, and discovered the Thorian over the course of development, only later learning of its past. There's really any number of explanations for when and how it was discovered, but either they built the Metropoli to hide it, or they found it while building the Metropoli. Now, for what it was doing in the skyscraper, it's possible the Protheans moved it there of their own free will, so they could more easily access it for study or the Thorian enslaved mines and forced them to help it move up into the skyscraper. Why? Who knows, maybe that helped it somehow. The old growth listened to flesh for the first time in the long cycle. 
This line implies it has listened to organics before, but Saren was the first it negotiated with, at least since the Protheans. I think the most logical answer for why the Protheans didn't destroy it is that they were studying it. I mean, once citizens started being mind-controlled, they would have noticed fairly quickly, just like Exogeny did. Exogeny could have destroyed the Thorian right away, but instead sacrificed Zoo's hope to take advantage of it. I imagine Protheans would have done the same thing. Maybe for different reasons and with a different end goal, but they basically saw the potential and set about trying to control it, or at least learn from it. They probably would have sacrificed citizens to keep it placated, and were trying to work out if and how they could control it. They made it a nice home in the skyscraper so it could be more easily contained and observed. It's possible they made a deal with it, like Saren did. But now, why did the Reapers spare it? Why is Pharaohs so intact compared to the rest of the Prothean worlds? Well, to answer that, I want to first look at the Geth. Saren ordered the Geth to destroy the Thorian and any trace of its existence, because he knew Shepard was following him and didn't want to risk them getting the cipher. But the Geth launched infantry assaults. They dropped heavy units on the Skyway, they set up a base in the Exogeny structure. Why did they not bomb it from orbit? They had the ships to do so, and Pharos was underdefended. Heck, Saren and Shiala clearly got into the Thorian's lair. The Geth could have even set up bombs on the lower levels to try to bring the whole thing down. They had a bunch of better options than throwing their light infantry at the colonists. At first I thought this was just a plot contrivance, but then I realized... Pharos is intact, the Thorian spared, and the Geth are under the control of Sovereign, not Saren. I don't know about you, but it sounds to me like the Reapers wanted the Thorian alive, or at least intact. Could they have made some kind of deal? Unlikely, since the Reapers don't really have honor. More likely, they too were studying it, just in a slightly different way. Leviathan describes the rest of the galaxy as an experiment that the Reapers would harvest at the end of each cycle. But the Thorian was a highly unique entity. Dr. Bryson points out that it evolved entirely without technology, let alone the mass effect that all other advanced life used. This alone made it worthy of further examination. Perhaps just like Exogeny was doing with the colonists, the Reapers were doing over a much longer period of time with all organics. But interestingly, the Thorian may have been one of the Reaper's greatest threats, because it is one of incredibly few species that can effectively resist indoctrination. One species is the Leviathan, another is the Rachni. The Reapers always failed to effectively indoctrinate the Rachni, perhaps due to their hive mind. They were only able to control them once they implanted tech in their bodies, and that could only be done after subduing the Queen. But the Queen was not controlled. She says she could hear the machines, but they couldn't control her. The breeder, on the other hand, was artificial. I guess a clone or something? But even that was incomplete. Like it knew it was wrong, unnatural. So that couldn't resist, but the queen could. And the Thorian, not only was it not indoctrinated, it was able to supplant indoctrination in its thralls, like Shiela. She was indoctrinated before being given to the Thorian, but then she was freed from it. In an email from her in Mass Effect 3, she says she knows she is still indoctrinated, but her connection to the colonists from the Thorian drowns out the Reapers. If it wanted to, it could have warned the galaxy about them. Heck, I'm sure it didn't want to be studied by the Reapers. But. With the Reapers harvesting everything and new life coming in, that helped the Thorian expand and grow its mind. 
That's why it was happy to control the humans, and why it accepted an Asari as a sacrifice. The cipher came from it harvesting Protheans. So maybe the Thorian allowed the Reapers to continue, so it would keep getting more and more powerful. Maybe it planned on warning a cycle once it was more powerful, or it found one that it thought could actually win. Heck, it probably didn't know about the Crucible. So let's recap. The Thorian was able to resist indoctrination more effectively than pretty much any other species we know of besides the Leviathans and maybe the Rachni. The Protheans knew of it, and were probably studying it. It was moved to the Skyscraper to protect it. Exogeny found it, and they too began studying it and its mind control abilities. Saren gave the Thorian Shiala in exchange for the Cypher, which was created by the Thorian harvesting Protheans in the previous cycle. It appears the more species the Thorian absorbed, the more intelligent and powerful it would become, which is why it accepted the powerful Asari. That could also explain why it did not warn anyone about the Reapers. They were essentially enabling more and more species to come to the planet for the Thorian to absorb. The Reapers wanted to avoid harming the Thorian too gravely, because, just like everyone else, they too wanted to learn about its evolution. The Reapers and the Geth could easily have destroyed the Prothean with an orbital bombardment if they wanted to. So clearly, they did not want to. Its neural nodes extended all over the planet, well away from its central mass, so they didn't even want to risk harming those, which is why Pharos is so much more intact than the rest of the Prothean Empire. So I think that about does it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section, and let me know what other Mass Effect topics you'd like to see me cover. So that's it for now, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to comment and like. Ishari.